Welcome to the National Crime Victim Law Institute's online toolkit video on the victim's motion to quash subpoenas in a criminal case. We will address the party's attempts to obtain records or other so-called discovery from crime victims pre-trial and provide a broad overview of one means of resisting this, filing a motion to quash. The term discovery is used loosely here as crime victims are not parties to a criminal proceeding and they have no discovery obligations. Let's address a couple of qualifications before getting started. First, we will be assuming that Brady obligations are not implicated. In other words, the information sought has not been turned over to the government. The analysis is different when the government is in possession of the information. Second, we will not address technical errors in subpoenas, such as subpoenas that are improperly served, subpoenas with requ requests that are so vague as to be incomprehensible, and so forth. However, it is important that you scrutinize all subpoenas for technical errors before crafting your response. Subpoenas for information about a crime victim are broad and wide-ranging. Common records that may be subpoenaed include medical records, psychological records, educational records, personal computers, information stored in online databases such as internet email accounts and other cloud services, cell phones and phone records, including text messages archived by the phone company, online social media posts, diaries, and other personal records. Contained within these items are often highly sensitive information, including therapy notes detailing the victim's mental health, medical diagnoses and treatments, school testing results, and otherwise private information. If the victim's sensitive information is the subject of a subpoena, the first and most basic step is to talk to your client about whether to fight disclosure or to disclose all or a portion of the material sought. Discuss the pros and cons of each option. If your client wants to challenge a subpoena, one mechanism is a motion to quash. We'll discuss some key arguments that should be considered and, if applicable to your situation, included in the motion. First, defendants have no constitutional right to pretrial discovery. Defendants typically argue that they have a right to receive pretrial discovery from crime victims under various constitutional grounds such as the Confrontation Clause, the Compulsory Process Clause, or the Due Process Clause. However, the Supreme Court has stated that defendants have no general federal constitutional right to discovery in a criminal case, and Brady did not create one. The Supreme Court has also observed that defendants do not have a right to pretrial discovery from non-government record holders under the Confrontation Clause or the Compulsory Process Clause. The Due Process Clause could provide a basis for discovery when the requested records were in the possession or control of a government agency. The analysis changes if defendant's request for records occurs during trial. Therefore, a successful pretrial motion to quash on this ground may not be the end of the inquiry. Second, crime victims have a federal constitutional right to privacy. Although the right is not expressly found in the United States Constitution, the Supreme Court has interpreted the Constitution as including this right in several cases. For example, in Roe v. Wade, the court held that a right of personal privacy or a guarantee of certain areas or zones of privacy does exist under the Constitution. Additionally, many state constitutions provide an explicit or implicit right to privacy for all people or for crime victims specifically. So if your state's constitution doesn't have a general privacy clause that applies to all people, look in the constitutional victims' rights provisions for an explicit right to privacy or an implicit right to privacy through the right to be treated with fairness, dignity, or respect. The right to privacy and to be treated fairly is sometimes found in state statutes rather than in the Constitution. In addition to a constitutional right to privacy, in some jurisdictions, crime victims also have a constitutional right to refuse discovery or prevent disclosure of certain records. For example, in California, crime victims have the right to refuse an interview deposition, or discovery requests by the defendant, the defendant's attorney, or any other person acting on behalf of the defendant. Arizona and Oregon have a similar constitutional provision. There may be other constitutional or statutory provisions that are useful as well, so be sure to conduct a broad review of your jurisdiction's laws. Next, if defendant is seeking access to privileged records, statutory and policy grounds also provide a basis for fighting defendant's request. Every state and District of Columbia recognize a patient therapist privilege 
or patient psychologist privilege. Additionally, many states protect communications between a crime victim and a social worker, a child abuse counselor, a sexual assault counselor, or other professionals. These statutory privileges vary in strength depending on the jurisdiction. Finally, defendant's request must also be relevant and specific. Case law often refers to this requirement as not permitting any fishing expeditions. Requests that are overly broad, such as requesting information well beyond the time period at issue, or requesting more information than could reasonably be admissible at trial, should be attacked on this ground as well. In conclusion, a defense successful request for pretrial discovery against the victim should be the exception rather than the rule. Defendant has no constitutional rights in play pretrial when requesting records from non-government entities such as the victim. In contrast, the victim has constitutional and statutory rights, as well as strong policy rationales for preventing disclosure. You can download a sample motion to quash, which includes all of the arguments we've addressed from NCVLI's online law library. The online law library has other materials, including NCVLI's bulletin on refusing discovery requests of privileged materials pretrial in criminal cases. This concludes our overview of the victim's motion to quash subpoenas in a criminal case. Thank you for joining us. Please visit NCVLI's website for additional resources.